So many movies in a small world. So many movies to be seen. Movie Holocaust. Movie Holocaust. Movie Holocaust. Movie Holocaust. Sifting through the good, exposing all the bad. Reviewing films in half, like it's all I ever had. Viewing hidden treasures, fooling and viewing pleasure. Movies are king, I stare into the screen. We are here to view the films for you. Movie Holocaust. Hello, um, welcome to Movie Holocaust. I'm going to talk to you about some uh, DVDs today. Pieces. It's exactly what you think it is. Man's going around and he's sawing women into lots of pieces. Starts out with a young boy and him and his mother, they just, they don't get along very great. So one day he approaches his mother with an axe and he cuts her into now, if you're looking for a film with a lot of nudity and a lot of gore and not a whole lot of plot, then Pieces is perfect for you. Now, Pieces is a very fun, entertaining film. Oh, hi! Also, something interesting about the movie Pieces. There's um, a lot of really cool special effects, and the movie won tons of awards for special effects, but um, I was watching the behind the scenes, and there was this one scene where a woman gets uh, sawed with a chainsaw right through her side, and I guess what they did was they took a dead pig and they taped it up against the wall. So on the shot of the man going in to chainsaw the girl, also they cut to the back of the dead pig so that it actually looked really genuine when it was uh, slicing the pig open. So that is very, 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 very realistic. realistic. Also, it's an interesting way to do a special effect. So uh, the, the next film that I'm going to talk about is a film that I had found uh, one night and I I'd heard about it a little bit before. It was a Jalo film. So um, I was really interested in it and I just bought it and took it home to my house. And um, uh, when I put it in my DVD player, I felt like for the first 20-30 uh, minutes or so, I was just sort of uh, just lost in this uh, nightmare of a movie. It was so horrific and just there was something about it, just a, a dark undertone. It's a very, very strange movie and it scared me quite a bit, but I ended up falling asleep because I was really tired. But the next day, I woke up and I finished watching Torso. Torso is about a psychosexual killer. He does horrible things to women, horrible things. But there are some scenes in this movie that are just so beautifully directed that if you were to take all the sounds out of it and just place a song over it, it would make an incredible music video. This film, in the end, it was extremely disappointing when you figure out why the killer's doing what he does. But you can't always, you can't always win with jobs. But the thing that is so great about this film is just the eerie atmosphere that it creates. So if you get a chance, please check this one out. And if you've already checked it out, then, then maybe you know what I'm talking about. And maybe you agree, and maybe you don't, maybe you disagree. So this film here um, is, a, is a classic to me. Now, if you ain't ever seen Congo, let me tell you what you're missing out on. You're missing out on all kinds of killer, evil-looking gorillas. A uh, gorilla that can talk to you. Um, um, there's Lava, there's King Carey, there's Bruce Campbell. Hi! Now, this next film I'm going to talk about, i got to say, very, very good. One of my all-time favorites. This movie, Hello. it's called 30 Days of Night. Now, it's about these vampires who are trying to kill these kids that are running around trying to hide from them. And uh, they're not doing a very good job. Well, before we talk about that movie, there's another movie that I would still like to talk to you about. Hello. Just watch the movie Franklin. Comes out this Tuesday, so it's like uh, tomorrow. It stars Sam Riley, and if you don't know who Sam Riley is, he played uh, Ian Curtis, Joy Division, in the movie Control. And um, it also stars Ryan Phillippe and Eva Green. And if you don't know who Eva Green is, she was in Dreamers and she was uh, in Casino Royale with Daniel Craig, and she's the only reason why I ever watched the movie. And I'm glad that I did now because I love Daniel Craig as Bond. Um, so when I okay. so when I saw the cast, I was I was pretty excited, and then I, I watched the movie, and um, and then I got less and less excited, and then in the end, I was extremely unexcited. 
basically to make a long story short it's not good and doesn't make any sense and it tries very very hard to be about something but it's just about ridiculousness so the last review that uh, we had posted i uh, did a review of jennifer's body and i forgot one of the most important things one of the things that i thought was really cool about the movie because i wasn't a huge fan of the film is that um andy from child's play one and two is in the film it was kind of trippy to see him because uh, he got replaced in Child's Play 3 with an older actor because his character was supposed to be older and it was really stupid that they did that. But um, it was just so strange when I looked at him, I was like, holy shit, that's Andy. Yeah. So if you ever wonder what happened to Andy, you know where to find him. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. So this one time, I was at Barnes and Noble and um, I was looking at DVDs and a particular DVD caught my eye. I recognized at once and could always recognize from a mile away Mike Mignola's artwork. And if you don't know who that is, he is the creator of Hellboy and this is his art. He very rarely um, does the drawings anymore for uh, Hellboy comics. But when he does, they're always the best. I love the way he draws Hellboy. He draws Hellboy better than anybody else. And uh, so I immediately recognized that it was his work, and it was called The Amazing Screw on Head. And it is actually pretty amazing. And you know, the thing that's so interesting to me about The Amazing Screw on Head is how Mike Mignola came up with the idea for Screw on Head. He, everyone kept telling him, oh, you need to think more commercially, you know, because all this stuff appeals to an older audience or just uh, not a, a very wide audience. So he's like, okay, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna do it just for fun. I'm going to start thinking of, uh, you know, more commercial ideas. I'm going to start thinking commercially for fun. He's like, oh, well, what do kids like? Oh, kids like toys, you know. And so he's like, hmm. Well, one day Mike saw all these Batman figurines. And um, all of the bat, there was like five different Batmans, and their heads were all the same, but their suits were all different. There were like five, there's like five thousand different uh, Batman toys that you can buy. And so he's like, mm, you know what'd be interesting is if it was just the bodies, and the head would like screw off, and you could just put it on you know, different bodies, and then you could just sell all the bodies, and um, just buy the head separately. And he's like, hmm. hmm. That's actually pretty interesting. His drive wasn't necessarily to make the idea come to life and then, you know, make thousands of dollars on the action figures, although I don't think he would be opposed to it if it did work out. But anyway, so he's like, well, that'd be a really interesting idea for a comic book. So then he did one issue of The Amazing Screw on Head, and then um, HBO was going to do a pilot of it. And so this is the pilot episode, and Paul Giamatti does the voice of Screw on Head. And not enough people tuned in for the first episode, so it got canned and they've asked Mike if he's ever going to do another issue because he's only done one issue of Screw on Head and he said that he pretty much did everything that he wanted to do with that idea and he didn't want to return to it. He was willing to sort of sign it over to HBO and help with the story and stuff but since it didn't get picked up it's pretty sad. Very, very, very good movie. You should check that one out for sure. It's one of my all time favorites. The good news is your dates are here. The bad news is they're dead. So, Night of the Creeps just came out on DVD about two weeks ago. You've probably seen this movie half a dozen times when I was younger, but um, it was never uh, transferred to DVD until uh, very, very recently. And so I picked it up, and I, I would do a review on it, and I, and I know that I love this movie, but sometimes things change. But I have a feeling, I have this strong feeling. I'm really gonna like it. I really, I really do believe that. I really think that it's, it's uh, probably just as good as I remember it. Being on there.